Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Wednesday the 8th of September. One of the days the Church is invited to remember Mary, Mother of Jesus, the birth of Mary. Not a date we can find in a calendar anywhere, but a prompt for us to give thanks. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all the peoples. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. A suggested psalm for tonight is Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Our first Bible reading tonight from Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. My point is this. Heirs, as long as they are minors, are no better than slaves though they are the owners of all the property. But they remain under guardians and trustees until the date set by the father. So with us, while we were minors, we were enslaved to the elemental spirits of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. We pause and reflect during a piece of music, Salve Regina Mater Misericordia.
and a Gospel reading from St John chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out, and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom, and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they remained there for a few days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The mother of Jesus was there. Quite rightly, the focus of our devotion, the story that we tell, has at its heart Jesus. But Jesus had a mother. And John begins, the mother of Jesus was there. Her contribution in this episode alone is woven into the fabric that proclaims Jesus. When the wine gives out, it is, we're told, the mother of Jesus who highlights they have no wine. Yes, she's ticked off. Woman, what concern of that is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. But his mother, we're told, said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Mary, signpost to Jesus. Mary's bequest to us. Do whatever he tells you. Mary's legacy, the one she bore. And in his name, and in trusting him, water is turned to wine. Empty glasses are filled. Vintage beyond imagination is possible. To what extent? Are we, with Mary, woven into the story? The mother of Jesus was there. You're there. I'm there. We're invited to be there. To share the story with others. To repeat her words. Do whatever he tells you. And in his company and... At his bidding, find that what is ordinary becomes amazing. What is still to the point of being tired fizzes and buzzes and effervesces in his presence. In Cana of Galilee, at a wedding, the mother of Jesus was there at her son's side, pointing the direction of the servants to his bidding, and Jesus there 
did his first sign, revealed his glory and disciples believed in him. May we, with Mary, be part of his story, do his bidding and know joy even when there seems no possibility of such. Amen. Tonight's hymn is faithfully reformed in its central line that there is indeed nothing told about this woman. But this hymn takes us through her wovenness into the story that is Jesus.
Let us pray. Lord our God, at the ending of this day and in the darkness and silence of this night, cover us with healing and forgiveness that we may take our rest in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who with special grace made Mary to be the mother of your only Son, by the same grace make us holy in body and soul and ever preserve us in us your gifts of humility and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, to you be glory and praise for ever. For you have given us a share in the inheritance of the saints in light. In the darkness of this passing age, your saints proclaim the glory of your kingdom. Chosen as lights in the world, they surround our steps as they journey on towards that eternal city of light where they sing the triumphant song. Open our eyes to behold your glory and free our tongues to join our song with theirs. For great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God Almighty, just and true your ways now and for ever. Amen. We offer to God our prayers and I frame my prayers around the hymn that we have just listened to. There is nothing uh, told about this woman but that she once became engaged and an angel addressed her and said, you're blessed among all kind. Let us pray for those who are new in love and relationship, the engaged, those in early years of love and sharing life together, that they may find blessedness in one another's company, in their love for one another. There is nothing told about this woman, but that she had brought into the world, into the land of Judah, her son, for some shepherds have passed on this tale. Let us pray for those who in recent days have become parents or who are in crucial conversations and processes about adoption or fostering. And for all whose daily work entails the care of the young. There is nothing told about this woman, but that she had searched for three long days for her child who was busy elsewhere, and her heart then did not understand. Let us pray for all for whom parenthood and love brings with it great challenge, questions and an inability to understand. For those who as family have to stand by and be puzzled, yet support the plans and the journeys of the young. There is nothing told about this woman but that she at Cana was a guest and that Jesus changed water to wine so that all might believe who he was. Let us pray for all known to us who at this time feel that their lives are plain and ordinary, perplexed and troubled, murky and mysterious that the love of God might change all of that to better and glorious and wonderful. There is nothing told about this woman but that she was standing by the cross when her son stretched his arms out on high and met death with a thief on each side. Let us pray for those and with those who know the worry and the anxiety of watching the suffering 
and knowing the deep needs of those that they love. We continue to pray with Celia and the family for her grandson Alfie. With Liz for her great nephew Ryan and for her daughter Emma. With Prince for Cheryl. With Judith for Catherine, her niece. With Paul and Alison for James. For Tom and with Tom for Bonnie. There is nothing told about this woman, but that she was one in prayer with those upon whom tongues of fire did descend and the Spirit baptised them with flame. Let us pray for the church that traces its beginnings back to the flames of Pentecost. Praying for the churches of this East Midland Synod and tonight, in particular, the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Lincolnshire. And for those areas and pastorates seeking ministry in vacancy. And for candidates, moderators meeting and processes seeking to find new ministry for Lincolnshire. And let us finally pray for ourselves, that just as within that wonderful wedding revelation of glory, Mary was there, so too may we keep company with her son, faithfully follow his ways, and be part of those who enable the rich rejoicing of his touch and transformation. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen.